Well, my overall take for this budget is that it was a fascinating juxtaposition of things that I am very happy to see and things that we are very disappointed to see. And so I'll start with some of the things that we are very happy to see and things that we have been championing for a long time. They include dental care, the promise of pharmacare legislation, lots of action on housing. I would especially say co-op housing. Very happy to see the 6,000 units promised. Also, lots of small things going through there that I found really exciting, like a uh, program for menstrual equity that also included mention of trans and non-binary people, and also employee ownership trusts. Overall, though, I felt like for a budget that promises to be transformative, I could not call it such a thing, especially because there seems to be a focus on people having value based on their productivity instead of a focus on well-being which is what we firmly believe is necessary for any transformative policy and budget. Really, there are some main things that I was looking for that I was disappointed not to see. Et une des choses, c'est une grande lacune en matière de transport en commun. C'est clair que ce budget est une décision, absolument une décision, pour soutenir seulement uh, l'individu avec, uh, avec nos voitures et uh, ça manque le, le, le soutien pour transport en commun en plusieurs façons. One thing is that we just don't see real support for rail, something that I think is completely necessary going forward. There's a couple of mentions but nothing really substantive. The other is at a time where we're seeing less and less bus service, especially to remote communities, something that is completely necessary when you look at the murdered and missing Indigenous women, girls, and two-spirit report. This is taking away services, it's an issue of equity, and also a huge deal in terms of climate policy. And that's really, I suppose I'm supposed to talk about it, it's Green Party leader, what we think about in terms of climate policy. This was a huge disappointment, especially after the approval of Bédunao yesterday that there, isn't, there aren't measures to make up for this. And we see instead just really investment in the fossil fuel industry. And when we're looking for something, we're looking for measures across the board, saying every single area of policy should have something addressing climate. And this is why I'm really disappointed about public transit. Something like that is a policy that's necessary. And sure, there's a huge section on electric vehicles, but it, that in itself is a decision about the type of society that we're building through the climate emergency. And as we've said many times, net zero is not sufficient. We do not hit our Paris targets of 1.5 degrees with a net zero plan. And so we're not, we're just plainly not satisfied with the climate parts of, of this budget. Also, coming out of the pandemic, or hopefully coming out of the pandemic, I was very much hoping to see mention of food and water security. The support and the investments for Canada water strategy are just not sufficient. And same, there are mention of sustainable agriculture and also really helping support our supply chain, something that we're very aware of from the pandemic, but no real investment in local food security. And then, probably the final thing that I will mention as an overall piece that we were very disappointed about, c'est uh, la santé mentale. C'est quelque chose qui est très important aussi avec la crise climatique. Que tout le monde a, a l'accès et, et vraiment le soutien pour, pour leur santé mentale, et c'est vraiment pas là. The promises around mental health were, I think, quite, quite disappointing, and at a time where they are more important than ever.